So what I'm gonna do now is to play a track from Bobby Davis. Take a listen. Ain't that loving you? Ain't that loving you from Bobby Davis? Yes, sons. No, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yes, I know. Yes. Okay. So you're gonna switch it on in a minute then. Okay. Okay, please. Okay, a wonderful track, definitely from Mr. Bobby Davis himself, Ain't That Loving You. Before I go any further, I'm just going to say, big up to OG himself for taking the show from around 7 o'clock right up until 12 o'clock. And from 12 o'clock straight up to 4 o'clock is um, Roots Doctor. And from 4 o'clock right up until 6 o'clock is Miss Smooth. Wonderful show from each and every one of the presenter from this morning. The time right now is 18.17 and I'm going to play a couple more tracks and as you know this today is a family legal show okay so definitely go and get your pen and your paper ready because there will be some question which you might want to um, get answered which you can ring in on 0753-9968143. You do not have to go on the air. Um, there is another number. I'll give that to you in a minute. So what I'm going to do is let's take a track from Mikey 
spice. Yes, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. Yeah, I've got that in front of me. Yes, okay, okay. Let me go back again and talk about the camera. Which one do I need to, um, to, to, one dead? Yeah. Yes, I can adjust that, yeah? As I said, that was a wonderful track from Mighty Spice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take another track from Mighty Spice. Okay, and don't forget 104.1 across the Canada, across the globe, Omega FM. Okay, and you can also catch us on live on Facebook 104.1. All right, so tell your friends this is the most talk about station right now for information and music which you like tune in 104.1 and you also can catch us live as I said on uh, Facebook okay right I'm gonna take another track from Mikey Spice Pull that one up definitely I've got to tell you about the family legal the family legal show um, right 
now. So get your pen and paper ready. Telephone number 753 996-8143 and you can as a, that's the number which you need to call in okay so tell your friends you can catch us live on Facebook 104.1 Omega We have four minutes left. If you really listen to the lyrics, you know, you will understand what he's talking about. Right now, there's so much. Um, pressure going on with the people that are out there right now so you have to really listen to the lyrics I'm going to take it back Six thirty, definitely. We will have Yvonne from YDR Probate Consulting, and the telephone number for that would be oh seven four five six eight five seven four zero eight. Track called Walk a Mile in My Shoes, Mikey Spice. September. Okay. 
okay. Let's pull up that right there. We have a couple more minutes leave or left before we go into the family legal hour. But first and foremost, let me um, introduce Yvonne because Yvonne is in the studio. Good afternoon That's and welcome good. to the studio. How are you on this cloudy, overcast um, evening? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Are you ready to, to go in the next couple of minutes or so? Yes, yes. all right. Okay. I'm going to take one more track and then we shall be on the giddy up, yeah? No. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live radio. <laughs> okay, no. Um, I didn't I didn't turn up the mic. Yeah. Cuz cuz I've done a mic check earlier on. So it was me. It's my fault. So I'm going to I'm going to put my hands up. <laughs> yeah, man. I put my hands up when it's when it's my fault. Okay. Okay, King. Who are you? What's what's your name? No, man. <laughs> yeah, I heard the voice, bro. <laughs> I know it, but I could just can't put a name to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, as I go along. Okay, no problem. All right. Yeah, man. Eighteen thirty one. One step ahead. Okay, there's a track called One Step Ahead. Wonderful track. Time now is 18.32. Okay. Right, I'm going to um, introduce Yvonne again. Good afternoon, Yvonne. Good afternoon, Henry. Yes. And how how about the old cloudy evening, what we have over here? What do you reckon? Well, we might get rain, we might not. Okay, fine. Okay, would you like to introduce yourself so that we can kick off the show? Yes, so my name is Yvonne Roberts and I'm here to host with um, DJ Heavy the Family Legal Hour where we will talk about a lot of topics that will relate to the family and the law. So it can be a wide spectrum um, and sometimes it's just something that's topical and in the news at the time and we'll bring that to you as well. Okay, so let's kick it off. Oh no! Before we gonna before we kick it off, would you like to tell the people and the experience that you have? 
Uh, well, yeah, um, I would consider myself to be a um, paralegal, so I'm not a trained solicitor, but I have worked in the court service for 30 years, and it's in that capacity that I gained my technical expertise and uh, my overall knowledge about the law. Okay, so let's kick it off. So what I'm going to do is to ask you a couple of questions right now. Go ahead. Because what's been happening regarding the... Um, I've seen a lot of stuff going on right now in front of my eyes, which I haven't seen before, which we find a lot of um, middle-aged men, so to speak, are sleeping rough, really rough. And um, I'm thinking, hold on a minute, what is happening right now? Is it, do you, it can't, could it be the Brexit? I don't believe so. Could it be that they are being thrown out of the house um, because of their partner? These are all things that's going through my head. But I am not really, really sure. Could it be the people from the army, which um, once they are out of the army, the army does not look after them and they like to take orders and because there's no one to order them or to tell them anything, they just lost along the way. What do you think about this? Okay, you've um, posed the scenario. I have to say, it wasn't something that I paid particular attention to lately. Um, I would say generally I'm aware that there are rising levels of homelessness um, and it's, a, you know me, I'm always taking it back to the politics, but it's the changes in the rules of the administration. Um, because, you know, taking it back about 20 years when we had lots of homelessness, particularly for young people, and there was an outcry from the public, and so there were policies introduced to try and do something about it. Charities, um, I don't know if they ramped up the game, whatever, to try and address this issue. However, um, not to discount any of the things that you've put forward, because I think they're all valid points, um, uh, something that I've spoken about before, not necessarily on this show, but just spoken generally, are changes to the rules governing um, what we call social security. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a number of changes, um, certainly that affect young people, that young people are not entitled to housing benefit. So young, if you're under 25, it's very difficult to get assistance there. Um, because they've been selling the um, home, the housing stock from the uh, social arena, so um, uh, let's see, um, social landlords, so your housing associations and your local authorities have been selling them properties, they've been building them and selling them, so there's less housing available uh, for social rent at an affordable price. Um, Private rents, I can't speak for this country, but private rents in London are eye-watering. Um, if, if someone is able to rent a room for £400 a month, they would consider themselves to be lucky. Um, or, um, you know, if you're on minimum wage, you'll be taking home about £800, so half of your income goes on putting a roof over your head before you've even started. Yes, that's uh, correct. Yeah, um, other issues I would say are so uh, the same as less social housing, um, rents are increasing, um, the change to the economy where there are more people in, so there are more people in work, but they're not in the kind of secure work that was the norm, certainly when I was a young person, where you could get a job in a bank, building society, insurance, government jobs, local and, and central government, and you could like go in 16 or 18 and stay in that um, industry, in that sector, until you retired, until you would accumulate a pension, you would accumulate rights, you would have sick pay, holiday pay, um, things like that. Whereas now when you have this zero hours contract, um, you don't know how much you're earning from week to week, you don't know what hours you're going to be employed. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that if you've got to think the combination now of high rent, rent, so there's not much, there's much less social um, in this rent, um, rented accommodation available in the social sector. Um, so um, the fact that it's, uh, if you're a single man, you have a lower priority than other groups um, to get housing. 
Um, again, if you uh, had been in the armed forces, particularly if you've seen, um, you've been in the theatre of war, and there's been many wars that um, British soldiers have been taking part in, Iran, Iraq, um, um, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, yeah, and, uh, to name a few. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there are high levels of uh, mental health issues which don't go addressed. It's part of the culture of the army and the philosophy of the individuals themselves. So that would make it um, they maybe not immediately, but having been discharged a few years into civilian life, these things will maybe be able to affect them. So they may start off working, be in a relationship, but these things will break down as their mental health breaks down until they get um, assistance. So again, that could be a factor, as you alluded to. Um, so there are many, many reasons, um, some structural, some uh, personal, and again, personal dynamics, um, if relationship break down, if you are in work and you get made redundant and the income you get from any subsequent work isn't at the same standard, again, so there's lots of pressures on individuals that may mean that an, a person finds themselves outside of the system of which they were actively a part of before. Okay, um, let me ask you a question. When did you realize that zero hours contract was creeping, creeping up on us really, really? I, I would say it first came to my attention probably about 10 years ago um, because of some judgments that were made um, since we reversed. Um, but it, it seemed to me that it was just a strange way to organise your work. And that if you had casual workers, because I assumed that a zero hours contract was a casual worker, and there was legislation about which said that if you were employed as a casual worker and you stayed there, after 52 weeks, you had then to be employed on the same terms as people in permanent work. So if you had permanent employees mm -hmm. who were entitled to sick pay, holiday pay, pensions and all the rest of it, and then you had a, ca a casual worker coming to fill in a gap. So maybe you had people on long term sick, um, or for whatever reason, um, you needed someone to fill a gap. Now normally casual workers would be employed for two to three months, plus even six months. But if they stayed in that post, then after 12 months, they had to be taken on on the full time employment. Right. Now the significance of what I'm saying is that arising from this, there are actually three types of employment. There's a full employee who has all the rights and benefits protected at law. Um, you have the, um, I've forgotten the same of it. Right. You've got someone with zero hours contracts who has no rights, who has very, very few rights. And you've kind of got a hybrid position where they have some rights and they can accrue more, but they're not, they don't have all the rights. So um, you're not protected against unfair dismissal and things like that. So. I'm sorry I'm rambling on a little bit, but one of the significant things about um, zero hours contracts is that all the benefits accrue to the employer, but nothing to the employees. The employee, the, the only thing they get is cash. Because they're not entitled to sick pay or holiday pay, they tend to get paid that in cash. And so, the, because their running costs are so high, they're not setting themselves up to protect themselves up, not setting aside money for insurance cover and all the kinds of things that you do if you had a permanent guaranteed fixed hours contract. Okay, because what I've seen and, and what I'm hearing, I thought it was after 12, week, uh, 12 weeks, mm -hmm. you're, you, you, they're supposed to offer you the job. And well, not the you. thing is, is that the way that they, when they, when you, this is what's happening out there, um, it's happening in the public sector uh, with both um, central and local government but it's most prevalent in the um, private sector and it could be anything up to um, one in five jobs and it's possibly more than that is a zero hours contract so you, 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 you apply for the job, they put out contract and they will offer you a minimum well some of them none at all which is zero hours contract yes. but what they will do is um, say make yourself available so then you can't say that you're not employed and you're not earning money so you can't sign on and you can't sign on with another employer so you sit around waiting to be paid and if they only call you for 10 hours it won't serve you particularly a lot of these people on zero hours contracts are also on minimum wage and it's a way for the business to control its cash flow 
by basically treating um, the people that work for them as a commodity and not as an asset. So other things that happen, uh, I'll just continue, mm -hmm. is that they do things like they will employ you for 12 hours, um, so you're guaranteed 12 hours work, but you have to be available for more. So if they call it short notice, which is they can call you on the day and say, come in. Um, other things that happen is they, they make you work extra long hours to fulfill um, a particular task. So you'll work a very long day today, but not come in the next day. And you don't earn, um, they don't pay overtime until you've worked the equivalent of a full hour a week, which is 36 hours. So you might pull a 10 hour day today, but then be on three or four hour days remainder of the week. So at the end of the week, you will have only uh, worked maybe 20, 21 hours. Um, okay, ahead, no, no. this is Omega 104.1 across the capital, across the globe. You're where you, you can find us on www.omegafmradio.co.uk. Continue because there's I've got another, um, I've got something else to ask, but continue. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, staying with this, um, there is one other thing which I needed to mention, which is uh, um, I'm referring to social security is that should you find yourself out of work, the government which they um, introduced this thing about three years ago, I think called Universal Credit, which will gradually take over all forms or most forms of the um, social security payments that you've got. Now one of the problems with Universal Credit is that there is no payment towards the housing costs for six weeks, four to six weeks. And it often takes a lot longer than that for the payments to make, uh, accrue. Now, under the law, um, after eight weeks, the landlords don't have to keep you there. They can actually take steps to have you evicted because you have broken the terms of the contract by not paying the rent. So even though it's not your fault, this is what happened. And going back to your original point, because of this, if you are unemployed on universal credits, many lawyer and landlords are now beginning to refuse to accept um, potential tenants who are on universal credit because the system works so badly. So that again, and there are proof positive in a number of reports that have been issued and published this year, uh, some as recent as two weeks ago, um, saying that there has been an increase in homelessness um, across all ages. Um, there's also been a, a knock-on effect in that the pressure and the stress it puts on families, there are more families breaking up and more families applying for divorce. Okay, we're not going to get away from um, the zero hour contract at this present moment, so I'm going to ask one more thing, because I don't know if you know this, because what's been happening with the agency themselves, they've been getting bigger and bigger and more powerful that they're, they're actually taking, oh, they're employing you now, of saying, well, you know what, if you're a driver, for instance, they'll say, all right, let me um let me give me your driver's license sign this piece of paper so that you can you don't need to come into the office anymore we will then ring up every three months for you so you don't need to be there um and they're paying you what they want to pay you and then you believe that yeah, yeah that seems good but no it, it's really is driving um ordinary people around the bend yeah, I mean, I, I think too, that kind of ties in with these changes where changes in work practices benefit the employer at the expense of the rights of the employee. And uh, one of the things that happens is that if you uh, are hired via an agency, it's a way of, it's supposed to be to fill a short term gap. So if you had a business and they were expanded rapidly and had new work and so didn't have enough staff, or they didn't have the managerial capacity to do the hiring and the HR services, you would go to, a, uh, you would pay an agency to find the staff for you. So you're, you know, you got short term work, you go to an agency, I'm available, I have these skills, what is available, you go in and fill the slot. So it's that kind of um, matching up. Yes. So you as a private individual, um, for whatever reason, don't need to be in a permanent job. So you're happy to take short term jobs. But what's happened now, and what I'm seeing, is that the big employers, big companies, and central and local government are now doing all their recruitment via agencies. 
And so what it does is it, it, it means that you're employed at one remove. You are not directly employed by the organisation that you work for. So although you work all the terms and uh, the, the hours that the permanent employee, permanently employed staff do, you don't have the rights. And this is what I'm saying about not getting the sick pay, not getting the holiday pay. And the most important thing is, is that if the way that you're employed, if you're, that, um, I'll come back to the point about 12 yes. hours. If you're working for 12 hours or less, you're unlikely to be earning a sufficient amount of money to pay national insurance. Now, the significance of that means is that should you become unemployed or sick, you are not entitled to those um, ordinary benefits, but you need to go to apply for the equivalent of a social fund and, and the discretionary payments for people that have made no contribution. It's very bad for the individual concerned, but it's also very bad for the economy because the demand is still there, the need still needs to be made and paid for out of the exchequer, but the 